So in this tutorial we're going to be looking at the kind of basic controls and user interface for Substance Painter. So you can see by default we have two views. One is the material on the mesh and one is the material shown in the UVs. Now to browse around these, if you just hold Alt, you can left mouse button to rotate. Um, you can right um, hold Alt and right mouse button to dolly in and out. And you can zoom in and out with your roller ball. Um, another little things you can do if you press F that will frame the model and the UVs. So the controls are similar on here. If we just hold Alt, we can rotate the UVs. If you hold Shift, you can um, uh, you can snap that to an angle. We can dolly in and out as well, and you can use right mouse button too. Okay, so you can use this tab up here if you want to um, change between each of your different ones, but you also have F1, F2, and F3 to do that as well. Um, so down here we have all of our imported alphas, and you also have your procedural maps you can use, generators, um, all your different textures, this is where you would import those, and so on. So over here you have all your brush tools and particle tools you use to apply stuff onto, to paint stuff onto your model or your UVs. And over here you have your different materials that are provided by Algorithmic and your smart materials as well. So normal materials are just like just plain wood or plain concrete. A smart material is a combination of kind of multiple things. So you have an aged copper here. So um, you can see it's got aging copper that's worn underneath and quite clean copper on the surface and the same applies to most of these so these will, those will give you a lot of kind of parameters to mess around with um, for kind of default material sets um, so over here you have your texture set setting so this is where you apply all your different kind of baked textures you can also bake from here as well um, this is kind of uh, your base channel setup so if we just take some of those out, let's say you only had a base colour in there, you could come in here and you could add all your different maps. So we know we need metallic for, for um, PBR metal in this pipeline. Um, we know we need roughness for that too. And um, we should also have height, and if you want to you can also have a normal as well, so you can tweak that at the same time. Um, now here you can set the size of your resolution. This is really important because the more complex stuff you're doing your, on your model, the more substance is going to lag. So if we put that really low, we're going to have a low detail display on here. But I can come in and I can paint on this really easily with no slowdown. I can go back up without losing any quality. So you can go up and down without losing any of your, uh, of your texture quality because it's all procedural based. Um, so once we rub that up a bit higher though, obviously what's going to happen is it's going to be a little bit slower to work. So you can see then that slight kind of delay when I'm painting. Um, in viewer settings here, we can actually change everything in this viewer area here. So we can put our opacity down on our environment um, and we can pick different environment maps. There's quite a few kind of in there by default. Um, we can set the exposure so we have a lighter viewport as well and you can rotate this the environment if we just put that back on you can rotate that environment around to to uh, get it to the point you want it to be um, you have AO on your model as well so you can change the intensity of, the of that too um, wireframe can be quite useful um, but normally when you're using it it will pop up for you anyway but if you do want to view it you can tick it on here and you can set the opacity and obviously the colour as well, that depends on obviously how functional it is. Okay you can do stuff in post effects too, so you can add, um, let's just take that off, so you can add things like glare and so on on your model. So you, take that on. So you can add things like glare on your model and stuff like that can be useful but normally I don't tend to use these very often so I have things like a vignette as well, it's got like a black outline around there you can even have lens distortion and things like that um, anti-aliasing might be quite useful I guess but uh, 
I think they're by default anyway. Um, so over here you have your different materials that are applied on your model. So we have, in this case we have two materials. We have a glow one, and if I just select that layer, I can define the kind of colour of that if I want. So I need to paint it in. And notice how it doesn't affect the rest of the model. Um, and if I go back to Matt here, this is obviously the one where I can um, paint onto the rest of my um, onto the rest of my model. So yeah, I can bring that through if I wanted like that. Um, as you can see, when I'm painting, it's it's keeping the whole model there. One thing you can do if you go to Edit Settings, if you um, only display the selected material, tick that on. It will now only display the bits that you are able to paint on. And notice how you have a different layer set for each thing. And I even have my slots there for that, but in my mat, I've set different slots. So you can see that not only is it layer specific, it's also channel specific too. Um, so let's make sure we're on our main material. We'll add an empty layer. And then we can have a look at some of these brush tools. So when you're on an empty layer like this, you're going to be painting in a material. You'll either be painting in a material or um, you'll have defined your own parameters. So if you, you see I'm set to blue here, I have a height set to 0.6, I have roughness, let's keep that very uh, reflective actually, and I'm in non-metallic. So when I paint on this, you'll see that material comes through. If I change the colour of this, I will paint straight on that like that. And if I put my roughness the other way, so it's very matte, when I paint I'm getting no reflection. So you can see that what you're doing is you're not painting in just pure albedo or pure diffuse, you are painting in full material. So um, this is why it's better to work with masks rather than painting straight on here. So I'll just show you what I mean by that. If we just delete that layer out, you can delete by just pressing delete. We'll add a fill layer in. And what we'll do is we'll pick a material from here, something like that will do. Now right click, add a black mask. And then what is better to do, if you then hold Alt and left click to go in the mask, just so you can see what you're doing, you're actually just painting in black and white. So white always shows through and black is invisible and grey is kind of in between. Now the advantage of, of this is I'm just painting in black and white. I'm not having to um, let's just set this to black. I'm not having to worry about painting my normal map and um, my roughness map and my albedo all at the same time and getting them all spot on. All I need to worry about is painting in black and white. So this really is the key to using Substance Well. And just to show you here, if I select my mask, I can just paint straight onto my mask without going into it. You don't need to specifically be in your mask like that by pressing Alt.